Hi, I'm Kimberly Acosta with Indian Country TV, and we're up in northern Minnesota at Nagajuanung Language Camp with the <laughs> three founders of the camp. They started three years ago. It's Pat Northrup, Jim Northrup, and Rick Greshik. You want to tell us about the camp, Pat, a little bit? Sure. Well, we have a great turnout this year. This is our third year, and um, it, it's just wonderful, all the people we had today. What, did you, what was the number that you had on this cold, wet day? 281. Wow, that's a lot in the, yes, in the yes. cold weather. Yep. Food was fantastic. We have a couple of good cooks this year. Um, we also have uh, received a lot of food from the campers, um, prepared fruits and beverages, and it's just been great how it's all turned out really good. Jim, you want to tell us about the whole conception of how you guys decided to do the camp? Well, one night we were playing Scrabble at my house, all three of us, cheating as hard as we could, and talking about this, that, and the other. And we thought, uh, well, it doesn't look like the reservation is going to do anything to help preserve the language, so why don't we do something? Why don't we have a language camp? At first we thought about holding it in our yard, and then Rick reminded us of the possible liabilities if somebody gets hurt or something, they'd sue us for our homeowner's insurance. So we thought we uh, would go to a public place like this that's owned by the reservation. And so the idea has snowballed since then. It seems like we're, uh, we're filling a, a need, a thirst for the language. I would just like to add that uh if we can give them a love, maybe they have that love already because they're here, but even the love that they can do it and they can pass it on to their children, and we know that this will be successful, that the Ojibwe language will live. And I want to say something about our campground. Maybe you've seen already the beautiful campgrounds that we have here. We dedicated this to Jim's grandfather. Tribal council was here, and they accepted this idea that we would call it Kiwain's Campgrounds. Kiwain's is short for Akiwainzi. And Jim's grandpa, Mike Shabayash, lived to be 95. And this lake is a home here for the people from Sawyer, from Big Lake. And so it's just nice to be here. This is a very traditional village uh, on this reservation. And it's good that we can do the language here and keep the culture going. And do you want to share with us the different kind of activities you have going on and the different people that you brought in to do those activities? Sure. We have uh, Mina and Ted Toulouse uh, from Wiki, Ontario, and they're teaching birch bark baskets and quill work. We also have Sarah Howes Egerton, uh, Fond du Lac enroll member, teaching uh, moccasin, moccas, how to make moccasins. We have Frank Montano, who is making uh, teaching flute making. Uh, we have Tuna. Naganab, his real name is Charlie, Charles Tuna Naganab, will be showing everyone how to make uh, cedar knockers and, and rice poles tomorrow. And then we have Helen Roy, who is teaching the language uh, up in the teepee. And then we have uh, uh, Vicki Ellis, who is also a tribal member of Fond du Lac, uh, is going to be doing dream catchers and small drums tomorrow and Jim's oh. doing his bir showing oh, us how to do I birch birch backers I forgot about one other person well two other people uh, Howard gimme one is going to be um, doing the hominy corn from the Oway with ashes tomorrow is boot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then we have of course Jim Northrup who makes birch bark uh, winnowing baskets New Scotch and uh, Nope. Nuskachinagan. Nuskachinagan. Yep. Nuskachinagan. None. You want to tell us, Jim, about your birch bark baskets? Yes, they're used for winnowing wild rice. We make wild rice that way every year, so we know what makes a good basket. And after 25, 30 years of making them, I think we've made every mistake you can make, and we try to avoid repeating that. So now they're starting to look good, starting to look like a real basket. I'm sure my grandfather would be proud. Rick, you want to tell us about the uh, canoe races? 
Okay. Uh, this year, an added feature is that we have prize money. So anybody here that thinks that they can compete, you're welcome. Come here on Saturday. We're, our canoe race, is, the first place is going to be $100. And tomorrow, I think we have a, a, a rising, kind of a rising polling event. Yep. And uh, they're going to have an obstacle course in a way. And we'll see who the best polar knockers are. There'll be teams, there are rising teams. And you'll be surprised how, 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 how good a lot of the people still are in a canoe so it'll be really fun and the thing that I do one of the things I do is I'm a I'm a teacher I've been a teacher almost 40 years and uh, for me to teach parents things that they can do at home with their children games that they can play I brought Jenga which we have a Ojibwe Jenga brought cribbage which we'll be playing in Ojibwe and I brought a lot of other kinds of card games that and uh, we also have a language institute that's, that's going on right now, and they're visiting us also, and they're bringing songs and stories and and uh, lots of language with them when they come. What do we see in the future with the camp in the coming years? Do you guys have some visions of more things you want to do? Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. I had a vision the other day. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just, you know, that... It, this one stops um, on Sunday, and then we start planning next year. And uh, how we gather ideas is for, are from other people and uh, community. We look at evaluations. Uh, we talk with uh, individuals here that are interested in certain things. I do know that it's very important that the indigenous arts go on. And one of the indigenous arts artists that that uh, was interested in coming and teaching is uh, black ash baskets. So we hope to have that next year. Randy's making drumsticks. And oh, oh, I'm sorry, I for completely forgot about Randy Greshik, who is going to be doing tomorrow uh, drumsticks, making drumsticks, and then drumming and singing to teaching our, our young people. Well, I want to thank you for taking some time to talk with us. I think this camp is a wonderful thing, and it's nice to be able to be down here for the next couple of days with you guys, and we'll be doing more videos throughout the weekend. And Rick wants to say something before we end. Well, I just want to say that, you know, you were asking how what visions we have for the future. One of the things is that more and more people will help share the, in the leadership of this camp, and we are already seeing that develop. The other thing is that, is that Ivy Vineo, who is really our... our uh, public relations person has gotten the word out really well so many many people have come and we want to acknowledge her and the work that she's done we're very grateful for Mushkawas and for the helpers over there they really did a beautiful job of making these Waginugan and they're just beautiful here and uh, we want to thank everybody that's taken part and uh, we it's open to everybody throughout Ojibwe country and Ojibwe country is a lot larger than people realize it goes all the way from Quebec to uh, to uh, British Columbia and all the way up to the Hudson Bay, down to the cities, and and uh, so we have people from all over, speakers from all over, and students from all over. So uh, we really, really are happy about this camp. Miigwech. Right. Okay. Jim, can you tell us about what's going on with fundraising to help with your guys' efforts here? Well, last February we had a storytelling and a silent auction uh, with art donated by various artists, and we raised three thousand five hundred dollars toward the cost of this camp. We've uh, made arrangements with other educational programs like uh, UMD, uh, Duluth Public Schools, mm -hmm. and a couple other places, and uh, they've donated money. Mm -hmm. And then we just had people come up and handing me money today saying this is for next year. Mm -hmm. And do you guys have a website or is there a place people can go or contact you to be if they are out there watching this and they want to donate and help support your, your efforts? Um, Thanks to Ivy Vino, we're on Facebook quite a bit. And so, how would they find you on Facebook? Uh, look for look us up by name. Look you up by name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so you need to look up Jim Northrup on Facebook, so that if you guys want to help with any funding, just get contact him and or Ivy Vino, and we'll run that across the the board there so that you guys can get the correct spellings. Okay, mm -hmm. we would like to say chi miigwech, a PG go miigwech, to all our funding uh, individuals and also programs, reservation,
the Duluth Area Foundation, the Northland Foundation, University of Minnesota Duluth, the Fond du Lac Nagachiwanung Reservation Tribal Council, and all of their programs, a lot of their programs are a part of this, the whole, putting the whole camp together. Um, what are, 13 Moons, I guess. 13 Moons gave us $3,000. Mishkawazan has in-kind contributions. They also donated food for the meals. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to forget anybody. Who else? Do you? I forget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one individual that did a real special thing this year on, on February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. She went and made chocolate candy and sold it that day for, and it made $260, and she donated that to us, and that was Roberta Welper. She's a Fond du Lac member here on this reservation, so really want to say chimigwitch to her, too, for doing that. And uh, there's been a lot of in-kind contributions from a lot of individual members. Uh, the meals are all, most of the meals are sponsored by large families on the reservation that are cooking the meals and delivering them and serving. Also, the, the Sawyer and Brookston Center uh, are providing a meal. The Boys Fort Reservation is sponsoring a meal. The face-to-face uh, -face program and the Northland Foundation is sponsoring a meal. Uh, the Martineau family, the Howes family, the Northrop family. Uh, any other ones do you think of? I'm at the other end. I'm eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a lot of the campers have, uh, we've asked them to bring food to share, and a lot of them have. So we we have fruit and, you know, potatoes and stuff like that that I said, you know, it doesn't have to be a large donation, just a small, and we'll put it all together. So it, it would not have happened because the meals are really a large chunk of, the, of, a, of a budget mm -hmm. for a, an event. And, and ours is very small to, because of that. So. It's been delicious food today. Mm -hmm. oh, and it's wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. We're all going to yeah. gain five pounds at least by the end of the yeah. camp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And definitely. So. And as you can see, my brother, the sun is coming out now. Yes, yeah. well, of course. Everyone laughing yes. and all the time. Get, <laughs> come and get nice out. We yeah. 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 a nice day tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Well, Chimigwitch, guys, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Kimberly Acosta with IndianCountryTV.com. Got her. <laughs> good, good. We got the yeah. little special effects of the rain there too. Yes, <laughs> it shows we're really out here. In <laughs> the elements, rain the elements. Yes. <laughs> All right. You ready, Dale? Stand straight. Yeah. I am standing right. straight.